Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. Marvel's Mania, Depression, Michelangelo, and Me, a graphic memoir by Ellen Fournay. Published by Avery, an imprint of Penguin Random House in 2012. Content notes for nudity, mood swings, medication trial and error, substance use, psychiatry, and loss of friendship. Clicking over to her website, quote, Ellen Fournay is an author, artist, speaker, and mental health coach. Marbles has been trans translated into six foreign languages and was selected for campus-wide book programs at the University of Washington and the University of California, Davis. Rocksteady was selected as a Best Graphic Med- Medicine Publication by JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association. For both books, Ellen was awarded the Media Partner Award from the Washington National Alliance for Mental Health. Mental Illness. Ellen curated Graphic Medicine Three, ill-conceived and well-drawn, a traveling exhibition on comics and health for the National Library of Medicine. Ellen grew up in Philadelphia and lives in Seattle. End quote. What keywords came to mind reading marbles? Mental health, social stigma, emotions, creativity, community, medical and art history, and family. The summary on Goodreads is, quote, cartoonist Ellen Fournay explores the relationship between quote, crazy, and quote, creative. In this graphic memoir of her bipolar disorder, woven with stories of famous bipolar artists and writers. Shortly before her 30th birthday, Forney was diagnosed with a bipolar disorder, flagrantly manic and terrified that medication would cause her to lose creativity. She began a years-long struggle to find mental stability while retaining her passion and creativity. Searching to make sense of the popular concept of the crazy artist, she finds inspiration from from the lives and works of other artists and writers who suffered from mood disorders, including Vincent van Gogh, Georgia O'Keeffe, William Styron, and Sylvia Plath. She also researches the clinical aspects of bipolar disorder, including the strength and limitations of various treatments and medications, and what studies tell us about the conundrum of attempting to, quote, cure an otherwise brilliant mind. Darkly funny and intensely personal, Fournay's memoir provides a visceral glimpse into the effects of a mood disorder on an artist's work as she shares her own story through bold black and white images and evocative prose, end quote. As I mentioned in my TBR video for this month, I have previously read and reviewed Marvels, but this video was before I reset everything a couple years ago, so it's no longer public. I also reviewed the follow-up, not sequel, Rocksteady, but it's from before I wrote scripts for these videos and tried to just talk off the top of my head. So I say, um, a lot. So check it out at your own risk. Anyway, thoughts on marbles. When I read this back in 2016, I ended up rating it only three stars. I thought it was vulnerable, but that it wasn't quite enough. Revisiting now, you'll have to wait until the end for me to settle on a new rating, but I think living and learning for the past six years has given me more perspective, and I feel like this book is much more generous and fulsome than I initially judged. Forney and myself are very different, and I was still more in the grasp of conservative and highly judgmental evangelical Christianity at the time of my initial review, so I feel like that probably also impacted my thoughts, which is evident when I use the phrase, quote, Forney certainly risks coming across as shallow at times, end quote. I mean, what even is that? I also have a better appreciation for the limitations of memoir, and maybe I'm just more in need of positivity now than back in summer 2016. That said, this is certainly still not a must-read, is any book really, because while Forney's experience with medical interventions is ultimately positive, that isn't the case for everyone. I do find myself looking back at this book often, though, every time the cliche of the tortured artist arises. So I thought it was vi- worth a revisit. That said, obviously, it's not as easy as just deciding you want help. Obviously, Forney is coming from a somewhat privileged position, being able to access mental health care in the so called United States at all. This time around, I do feel like Forney is pretty open about how she gains access to psychiatry and meds. Not everyone is willing to admit how much help they get from their parents. Forney also highlights how cost prohibitive medication can be and her own journey through different medication combinations. My bar for class consciousness is low, and this certainly passes it. I also appreciated the emotional honesty that Forney commits to throughout. Obviously, she's writing this memoir from the perspective of someone who feels they've reached a meaningful point in their journey, but it doesn't feel like we are just getting the perspective of that final point. Forney is able to recreate her experience throughout her journey in a non-judgmental way. 
I also really like the artwork in Marbles. If you've watched my channel for any great length of time, you know I love the dramatic black and white, and there's some cross hatching. It's beautiful, very expressive, and easy to follow. Not directly labeled as such, there is discussion of the ableism that Forney runs into both inside and outside of herself. Sexuality and gender are not the focus of this memoir, but because of Forney's life, there is diversity on that point. The same could not be said for clear racial diversity. Obviously, this is one of the issues that we run into with the memoirs of white people, seeing as the so-called United States is a very segregated white supremacist culture to live in, even if people are not wishing to actively participate in that. I'm certainly not sure how much opportunity for diversity there might have been in referencing other artists with potential mood disorders, but I was struck by how overwhelmingly white slash so-called Western canon all of them were. To conclude, a very solid entry in graphic medicine, although I'm pretty sure it predates the named initiative by just a tad. It takes a certain kind of bravery for people to step out and stand up to as much stigma as being bipolar can inspire. And it seems like Fournay is taking what she has learned and trying to pass it along in a much more accessible way, at least as much as a non-medical professional can, which is cool. Four stars. By all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.